Okay, geometers, uh, welcome to uh, lesson six of the first unit. And what we're attempting to do uh, in, uh, in this lesson is our focus is going to be on proving that lines are uh, parallel. Uh, and so we, we learned from the previous lesson that if we've got a pair of parallel lines and they're cut by a transversal, um, we have the corresponding angle postulate. Uh, and specifically, what the corresponding angle postulate says is that corresponding angles, which are the ones that fit into the F shape from the fun rule, are going to be congruent to each other. Uh, and uh, what we have is this idea of a converse uh, of a theorem. And so a converse of a theorem is essentially uh, the statement of the theorem in reverse order. So, so the statement and the conclusion are reversed. Uh, and so in this particular case, uh, we, our initial statement was, if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, the corresponding angles are congruent. Uh, in the converse, we say, um, if the lines are cut by a transversal such that the corresponding angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. And so you can see what we've done is taken the same statement and reversed the order. And in an instance where both the original statement and the converse are true, we refer to this as a biconditional statement which means uh, the parallel lines guarantee the corresponding angles are congruent, or vice versa, the corresponding angles, if they are congruent, guarantee that the lines are parallel. This is what we refer to as a biconditional, and you'll often see them uh, used with the words if and only if, which means the first condition guarantees the second and vice versa. And what you're going to find is that this is the format that we use on the theorem sheet, so we don't need to give you uh, two separate postulates, the original and the uh, converse. What we do is we just restate that as a biconditional. Okay, so the purpose of this lesson really is to reverse what we learned last lesson, which is to use, which is to say we're going to use the converses. And what we're going to be doing is attempting to prove that lines are parallel. And so we're going to do this by showing uh, using our essentially our fun rule. In reverse and so we've got our alternate interior angles if we can show that alternate interior angles are congruent we can prove lines are parallel we've got our secret service angles CIA consecutive interior angles if we can show that they are supplementary we can prove that the lines are parallel and lastly we've got our corresponding angles and again if we can show that those are congruent we can show that the lines are parallel there is the fourth Option, of course, the alternate exterior angles, and those, of course, you don't have to remember that. Those are just the angles that are vertical or vertically opposite the alternate interior angles. Okay, so that's going to be our aim, and let's start off just by making sure in the first example that we are able to identify uh, whether or not certain given information allows us to conclude whether lines are parallel. What I want you to note first of all is that there was a typo in your notes, so please change example 1c to measure of angle 1 equals measure of angle 6. I'm just going to try to resize this uh, so that we can see both uh, the diagram and the table, and then I'll size it back afterwards. Okay, so let's go through uh, each of these. What I'd suggest you do maybe is pause the video at this point and give these a go yourself, and then come back and look at the answers to see how you've done. Okay, so given information, angle 2 equals angle 4. The question is, is line J parallel to line K? Uh, hopefully you realize that because those are corresponding angles and because the corresponding angles are congruent, uh, the conclusion in this particular case should be yes. Okay, so I'm going to erase those markings because I'm going to reuse the diagram over and over. Uh, this time we're given that measure of angle 5 is congruent to measure of angle 6. Uh, hopefully what you realize is those are vertical angles, uh, and vertical angles are formed when uh, two lines intersect. They have nothing to do with parallels. And so uh, the answer to the question, does the given information measure of angle 5 equal measure of angle 6 show that J is parallel to K? The answer is this information does not allow us to conclude whether it is or it is not. And so you cannot draw a conclusion of parallel from given vertical angles. Okay, next example. So once again, I'll mark up the diagram. 
So we are given measure of angle 1 is congruent to measure of angle 6. This is actually a fairly tricky one. Uh, it's fairly tricky because we've got some lines that blur this a little bit. Uh, some of you, if you look carefully, you might have uh, you might have spotted that in fact the answer in this particular case is yes. Uh, one of the acceptable reasons would be alternate exterior angles uh, are congruent. Uh, and I can show you uh, what that looks like as follows. And so what we have is you've got your N or your Z. Uh, and what we've got is uh, this angle over here, uh, which is going to be congruent uh, to this angle over here because of vertical. This angle over here is congruent to this angle over here because of vertical. And then we've got alternate interior angles. And so you could have given the reason as alternate interior angles uh, plus vertical angles. Uh, and that would have achieved the same thing or if you spotted the alternate exterior angles. Okay, so that was one of the more uh, challenging of these. Let's go through the last couple. Uh, and so we've got measure of angle 2 congruent to measure of angle 3. Uh, in this particular case, um, some of you I imagine said yes. And what you're imagining is that each of these are 90 degrees. If that were true, you would be correct. But in this particular case, we know that they're equal, but we don't know whether or not they equal 90. And therefore, you do not know whether you can conclude this. If they equal 90, we could have concluded um, parallel, but that would have been because 90 plus 90 is 180. And so the fact that they're equal is not relevant. The question is whether or not they add up to 180. And the reason we're asking that question is because their relationship is one of consecutive interior angles. Okay, and then the last one, measure of angle 1 uh, and measure of angle 5 are equal. And hopefully uh, you can see that what we've got over here is our upside down flipped around F, which is corresponding angles. And so the answer in this case, yes. And the reason is because corresponding angles are congruent. Okay, next question. And so uh, this will be a good reminder of a system and I'll show you how to do that on the uh, calculator. So we've been asked to find the values of x and y that will make k parallel to m and j parallel to l. And so if uh, l and j are to be parallel, then uh, it must be true that 7x plus 16 must equal 8x plus y minus 6. And that of course uh, would be because of corresponding angles. So the values of x and y which cause those to be equal will cause uh, lines, I beg your pardon, k and m, I said j and l, what I mean is k and m to be parallel. And so I'm going to set up the first equation, 7x plus 16 is equal to 8x plus y minus 6. Just clean that up quickly. And then in order to determine whether or not uh, we have uh, J parallel to L, the relationship between these two angles over here is that they're consecutive interior angles. So I'm not marking them as equal, but uh, I am marking them. Uh, sorry, that should be the equal one. Uh, what uh, we do want to look at is uh, in order for those lines to be parallel, those are consecutive interior. And so the following statement should be true. Uh, 9y minus 10 plus 8y plus y minus 6 should equal 180 degrees because of consecutive interior angles. So I'm just going to pause for a moment and show you the calculator setup. Okay, so I've got my calculator here and I'm very quickly going to take you through the um, setup. So I'm going to a calculator page. I want to go to menu. I want to select algebra. Uh, and I want to select a system of equations, in this case, system of linear equations, two equations with the variables x, y, I'm going to click OK. And now I'm going to type the two equations in and hit enter. OK, so uh, I've typed the two equations in. Uh, small correction from earlier, you might have picked up, I wrote y, I've just corrected that quickly. I type them in as I see them, I hit enter, my x value is 12, my y value is 10. x equals 12 y equals 10. 
and this is the setup we're expecting you to show on a quiz or a test with the two answers is going to get you the four points. Okay, moving on. So what we've got now is uh, another theorem. Um, uh, and so what I want to do is remind you there's a little paragraph here that just explains how we build up. And so remember, we take definitions, uh, postulates, theorems, and properties. We use these to establish and prove other theorems. And then we can use those theorems in the proof of a further theorem. So you might recall this. This is how we build up from undefined terms to definitions to postulates, which allow us to write some theorems. We prove those and then we prove uh, we use them in other proofs. Okay, so a very quick one. Let me just explain this theorem. Again, you don't need to memorize. It'll be on your theorem sheet. But uh, these are uh, the theorem basically says if you have got two lines that are perpendicular to the same line in a plane, uh, then those two lines will be parallel. And so you can easily understand this because if line R is perpendicular to P, we have a 90 degree angle. If line R is perpendicular to Q, we have a 90 degree angle. And if you recall, if we have corresponding angles that are congruent, that results in parallel lines. And so we can use the corresponding angles postulate to prove this theorem to be true. Now that this theorem has been proved to be true, we can now use it in a subsequent proof or as a reason in a proof. Okay, and then just one quick explanation, and then we're going to try a couple of proofs, uh, and that is the parallel postulate. And what this says is if you have a line and a point not on the line, uh, you uh, there is exactly one line parallel. So remember, through any given point, there's an infinite number of lines. What this is saying is only one of those, exactly one of those, will be parallel to the other given line. Okay, three and a half minutes, we've got to wrap up a couple of proofs. So the so I'll go through this first one pretty quickly, and then uh, we'll go from there. So start off, we have given information and information that you've been asked to prove. So we are told that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, and that angle 4 is congruent to angle 5. Uh, I would suggest you always mark the diagram with the given information. Um, 1 equals 2, 4 equals 5. The reason for that is that it was given. And so this is a scaffolded proof. We've given you the reason for the next statement. And so this allows you to work it backwards. So they're saying that the justification for this statement is that they're vertical. If you come to the diagram and look for vertical angles, you should see that 2 and 5 are vertical. And so that allows you to conclude that angle 2 uh, is congruent to angle 5, and that is because of vertical. And then we have transitive as the reason. If you recall, transitive is what I refer to as the middleman property. If 5 equals 2 and 2 equals 1, then 1 must equal 5. And so uh, uh, we know that 4 equals 5, 5 equals 2, 2 equals 1. And so uh, that is our transitive reason. And so in this case, I'm able to say that angle 1 uh, must be congruent to angle 2, which is also congruent to angle 5, which we also know to be congruent uh, to angle 4. And then our final statement says, therefore, PQ uh, must be parallel to QR. And hopefully you've realized that you have managed to prove in the previous statements that angle 1 and angle 4 are congruent. Angle 1 and angle 4 are alternate interior angles and therefore the reason for the proof is or for the lines being parallel is alternate interior angles okay jump ahead to the next one and so what i'm going to do here is have you try this yourself and i'm going to write up the solutions and talk you through it in the next minute okay so let's see how you did on the proof and so what you can see is first i wrote out all the given statements and the reason was given the next thing i did was conclude that a b and e d were per, uh, were parallel because of the perpendicular transversal theorem, uh, two uh, lines that are perpendicular to the same line are parallel to each other. Uh, I also concluded that angle 2 and 3 were equal to each other because that is the definition of bisector. bisector uh, and so my reason is definition of bisect. Angle 1 and angle 2 are congruent because those are alternate interior angles, which I can use because I have parallel lines. Uh, and then my conclusion was... Of course, you can see from here, 2 equals 3, 1 equals 2, and therefore 1 must equal 3, and that's our middleman property. Uh, so the reason is not middleman, but transitive. Uh, if you found a different way to prove it, but you got to the same place, 
that's perfectly acceptable.